Amen. I'd like you to turn the book of Zechariah with me tonight, please, chapter 5. Get that in one hand, Luke chapter 21 in the other. Zechariah chapter number 5 tonight. Zechariah chapter number 5. Get that in one hand, Luke chapter 21 in the other. Zechariah chapter number 5. We'll start here in Zechariah. Zechariah chapter number 5. And verse number 6. And I said, What is this? And he said, This is an ephah, that's a, a unit of measurement, that goeth forth. He said, Moreover, this is their resemblance through all the earth. And behold, there was lifted up a talent of lead, and this is a woman that sitteth in the midst of the ephah. And he said, This is, a, this is wickedness. And he cast it into the midst of the ephah, and he cast the weight of lead upon the mount thereof. Then lifted up mine eyes, and looked, and behold, there came out two women. And the wind was in their wings, for they had wings like the wings of a stork. They lifted up the ephah between earth and the heaven. Then said I to the angel that talked with me, Whither do these bear the ephah? Said to me, To build an house in the land of Shinar, and it shall be established and set thereupon her own base. What you have in the book of Zechariah is one of these esoteric, in other words, hidden, and only to be revealed in the last times. Great deception that's coming on this earth. These are demonic forces that we talked about in the Sunday school class this morning. And the folks that were in that class remember some of the things we discussed. But we said that deception characterizes the end time. The scripture says it will be deceiving and being deceived. Amen. And falling victim to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And that's exactly where we stand today. In Luke chapter number 21 and verse number 34, the scripture says, Take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life. And so that day come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. This is quite a solemn warning. Regardless of how hard you preach this and how much seemingly that you try to get this warning out to people, they're oblivious to it. They don't want to hear it. They want to turn you off. The last thing in the world they want to hear is someone warning them about how near we are to the coming of the Lord. Amen. Butrus Butrus Ghali is the Secretary General of the United Nations. In an agenda for peace, UN Secretary General Butrus Butrus Ghali call, claimed, quote, the time of exclusive and absolute sovereignty has passed, unquote. Butrus Ghali also called for a far greater UN intervention and control of virtually all nations' domestic matters. Right now, there's a young man in the United States Army that's being court-martialed because he refuses to swear allegiance, salute, serve under the UN flag. I stand on his side. He swore allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. He swore allegiance to the republic for which it stands. He took an oath to uphold the Constitution of the United States of America and defend this country against all enemies, both foreign and domestic. When he joined the army, he took the same oath I took when I went in the Marine Corps. And I never served under the UN flag. But this young man, the army's handling very delicately. For they know what a, what a potential bomb this is. For they realize that it is a political bomb in America that a lot of people don't like the idea of our soldiers serving under UN commanders. Losing our sovereignty has become an issue. Longtime United Nations insider Brian Urquhart wrote an article entitled, quote, Selecting the World's CEO, unquote. CEO is an acronym for Chief Executive Officer. For foreign affairs, the House organ of the Council on Foreign Relations and calling for far greater power for the UN's Secretary General, Urquhart declared, quote, 
the office and its incumbent will continue to be a central element in what is our only long-term hope and probably our only alternative to a decline into chaos, the development of a global security based on the rule of law. And who would be the man to lead this? According to this fellow, the Secretary General of the United Nations. In Straight Talk, Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, a couple of months ago, this came in. As many as 500,000 illegals are buying fake social security cards, driver's license, birth certificates every year. They're using these fake documents to get millions of dollars worth of social security payments, welfare jobs, and other American taxpayer finance benefits. And strong evidence has been uncovered of illegals using fake documents to register and vote in our elections. Do you think government officials should take immediate action to prevent alien document fraud and protect your benefits and tax dollars? Right now, the Republican Party is cutting into Medicare. Medicare is a has a direct relationship and reflection upon you if you're over 55 years of age. You wonder about what's going to happen. Who's going to pay for your medical bills? Are you going to be left destitute in the street? What's going to happen to you? The medical, the medical industry in America is completely out of hand, the in, and, the, and the expense is spiraling completely out of control. Who's going to pay it? Right now, the United States government has spent millions of dollars to relocate Russian officers into homes over there in Europe. While our people right here, our veterans of Desert Storm, a man told me this morning about a little boy that was born with his hands attached to his shoulders. No legs, just two stubs and some toes sticking out. And this little fellow, not, a, not unique, a lot have been born this way, deformed, permanently deformed throughout life. He was born this way because of whatever his father had contracted, had been subjected to when he was in Desert Storm. The United States government absolves itself of all responsibility for the problems arising from De Desert Storm. But they can spend the millions to relocate Red Troop officers, Red Army, so Red Army uh, officers. The same outfit, mind you, that no more than a decade ago shot a Korean 747 out of the air who was carrying Representative McDonald from Georgia who had been doing his own personal inspection of a lot of undercover uh, shenanigans going on in this country and the man had dug into the wrong place and it cost him his life. And who shot him out of the air? Russia shot him out of the air. Who is Russia? It's the bear. They're the bunch in Ezekiel chapter 38 that come down against Israel. And God's going to destroy them, put a hook in their jaw. They'll pay a supreme price for what they're doing. Listen carefully. Policing the new world order. Ability, the ability to properly police world citizens. State Department document 7277 describes how the UN could be strengthened to the point where no one could challenge its peace force. It was announced the Army Reserve Command in Atlanta, Georgia, was going to reorganize completely its U.S.-based regional headquarters. According to Army sources, quote, the proposed structure will also permit the Army Reserve to provide more efficient military support to civilian authorities and federal agents in support of domestic support missions. What in the world is the United States Army doing in domestic support missions? FEMA was designed specifically to deal with emergencies within our borders, such as natural disasters, civil unrest. Remember, this was introduced during the anti-war demonstration of America's campuses. According to Mike Blair, during a national emergency, quote, civil rights now taken for granted by American citizens could be suspended and the nation could be ruled by a totalitarian system of martial law. In 1991, an ominous event occurred when that year's fiscal budget authorized FEMA and the Department of Defense to, design, to designate federal detention centers around the U.S. According to reliable sources, there are now 23 FEMA detention centers and 20 DOD, Department of Defense, detention centers for a total of 43. Each site can detain 33 to 44,000 minimum. Texas and Alaska facilities are very large, but Oklahoma City is the largest. It can handle 100,000 people. 
A report in Civil Engineering June 1994 highlighted the construction of a massive hexagonal prison being constructed in Oklahoma City to be used as a federal transfer center authorized by the U.S. Bureau of Prisons. This facility is to be used as, quote, temporary housing for federal prisoners who are transported across the country by U.S. Marshals. You kidding? A hundred thousand? So just what is going on here? It appears that our government is preparing for a contingency plan in order to deal with massive civil unrest, particularly if our entire economy suffered financial collapse or some other catastrophe. Now listen carefully. Every one of you in here today are driving an automobile. You've got a Ford, a Chevrolet, a Buick, Chrysler, so forth and so on, made by the huge auto manufacturers in America. These are huge conglomerations. These are owned by stockholders who have enormous amounts of profits to be made from the buying and the selling of automobiles. Ford plans to build an auto assembly plant in Vietnam because between Hanoi and the port of Haiphong, Chrysler has also indicated a strong interest in building a Vietnamese plant, thereby taking advantage of the country's virtual slave labor. An American missionary in Mexico reports that Chrysler is moving its plant in the Mexican city of Toluca to Red China. Apparently, Mexican assembly line workers who earn two to three dollars an hour have it too easy for the new world order crowd. You've heard of NAFTA and you've heard of GATT. And now, whether you realize it or not, folks, it's going to have a profound effect on your lives. People in the Midwest right now are losing jobs because the investors are investing their money in plants in Mexico and across the sea. They're buying cheap slave labor to build parts and to build equipment and then turn around and sell it on the American market. The American market is a prolific market. It's a powerful economy, a very powerful economy. It's able to withstand a terrible onslaught, but it cannot withstand forever. The American economy is going through the throes right now of change. And whether people like it or not, this is going to happen. This is part of the new world order. The idea is to level the playing field. The idea is to make all of the world in just one general amalgamated mess where they are answerable to one chief rabbi, one chief priest, one chief preacher, one chief religious figure, one chief ruler who's sitting probably at the head of the UN or some federated organization like that. People in America, folks, are hungry and people in America are losing their jobs. East Tennessee has not felt that much of the, of the, of the blow of the, of the, blow of, the of uh, unemployment in this world, in this country, but there are places in this country who, that uh, the whole cities practically that are nothing but ghost towns compared to what they used to be. Listen carefully. Here's what American workers will compete against under GATT. The average age of child laborers in the gold and diamond mines of the Ivory Coast is seven. Bonded labor is a euphemism for slavery, and Pakistan has eight million bonded children. Aren't you so glad that your little children aren't sold off into some sweatshop like that and you can raise them in your home and teach them about the Lord Jesus Christ, send them to school, and they can have their childhood? That doesn't come cheaply. The reason that you've got that in this country is because this country is built on the Christian principle and God has blessed America. But there are countries on this earth where they take children of seven and eight years old and they, 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 bond, they bond them. And this is, this is bondage, bonded labor. Well, this country started, and they, they sent people over here what called indentured servants. And an indentured servant was someone who had to pay back someone in Europe that paid for his traffic, paid his way to come to America. He had to work for them for maybe five years or seven years to pay back all of that. Then he was a free man. That was an indentured servant. America was built on the principle, though, that men love freedom and liberty. The new world order has no place for anyone that loves freedom and liberty. And folks... I'm trying to give the warning. I'm trying to get the message out. These things right here are very important. I don't think it's right for a man to own a company in America and make hundreds of millions of dollars overseas and have a tax shelter over there where he doesn't pay his fair share in this country and he doesn't hire these people, but he benefits from the American economy. I don't like that. That's not right. For the man that goes out and works a job flipping hamburgers at 4 or $5 an hour, you're never going to get anywhere. 
you're never going to get anywhere. You're never going to get anywhere. All you'll ever be able to do at best is halfway pay your bills and then you're going to worry where the rest of the money is going to come from. Amen. The reason that so many of the good jobs are leaving this country is because they can buy cheap labor in Mexico or cheap labor over there in Europe. You would say, what's it all for? It's to break the back of the American economy. The idea, as I just read to you a few minutes ago, is to put America into civil unrest. It's to put America into a situation where they start rebelling against this because people are losing jobs. Listen, America is the highest standard of any country in the world, especially for our size, 260 million strong. We throw away more than most people in the world would like to have. This country is so affluent, it's not funny. And I'm talking about the size of it. I know Sweden has money. I know Great Britain. I know, but none of them are compared in size to America. The gross national product of America is above and beyond anything in this earth. You take, you take Russia, for example. That's a backwoods, third-rate, hick country compared to this country. Red China and all the rest of them. This is a powerful nation. But in order for America to become part of the new world order, it's got to get in step and get in line, and GATT and NAFTA are two of the things that are going to be used to do it. Civil unrest and the business of taking our dollars and sending them out of this country. Right now, the American dollar has been falling for years on the foreign exchange. That's why you see so many foreigners in this country. They come into this country with their money, and their money's worth more in this country. You travel over there with your money, and your money's worth less over there. So you're seeing the beginnings, the eroding, the part that's taking the fabric and foundation away from what you believe your way of life. How many of you like to go live in a grass hut the rest of your life? Would you like to scrounge around on the dirt and scratch the ground, try to live like that, drink filthy, tepid water? Would you like to, would you like to spend the rest of your life with no medical care or facilities? All the things we have we have because of our fathers, our grandfathers, and our great-grandfathers that worked their fingers to the bone, and God bless them. And now we're turning around and we're handing it all away. God's not in that. God has nothing to do with it. As long as America is strong, America becomes the freedom and the light of the world. As long as America is strong, you can stand in your pulpits and preach the word of God. But you let us lose that one time, find out what happens. You let Christianity come under the auspices of the United Nations. You let it come under the auspices of the Muslim dictators of the world. You let Christianity come under the auspices of some one world dictator, one world religious ruler, and you find out real fast what happens to our faith. Yes, it's a real threat. It's a, it's a present danger. There's no question about it. Listen carefully. Large U.S. companies are looking to invest billions of dollars in India. Slave labor wages and the brutal brutality of the caste system could lead to large windfall profits for firms who want to export to America. Just about every automaker in the world is seriously considering plans to build autos in India. The official reason for the great auto rush is a huge untapped market, but India's average per capita income of $350 per year makes Mexico look like Beverly Hills in comparison. Could the multi multinationals be searching for another source of slave labor? Think of it. Americans march through the streets striking for 10 bucks an hour. They strike for $15 an hour. They strike for $20 an hour. And you live in a high-pressure economy. You live where things are available. You pay your light bills. You buy food. You buy clothing. You buy automobiles. It takes a whole lot more to live in America than it does India. And if they can get labor over there for $350 a year, can you imagine how much money they can make? The bottom line with so many companies in this, in this country right now in America is a dollar bill. Don't make any mistake about it. It's a dollar bill. That's why it's so hard for you to go out right now and find a full-time job. Most of the jobs available on the street today are part-time jobs. Why part-time? They don't have to pay your Social Security. They don't have to pay your Medicaid. They don't have to pay your benefits. They don't have to take care of you. They just hand you a check and off you go. You're part-time. Why? Bottom line, profit margin. Profit margin. They've already started 
in doing exactly what they intend to do. They're cutting the throat of the people, and yet we let them sit in this country and prosper and make millions of dollars right here in America. I wish somebody get up, I wish some politician would get up and start telling the truth to the American people about what's going on. I really do. I wish somebody would get up and tell you what's really happening. You say that's isolationism. I'm going to tell you what it is. America is the land of the free, the home of the brave, and the only light left on the face of this earth. If this light goes out, there's no light left. I'm telling you, if, the, if, the, if America is no longer preaching the word of God, nobody's going to be preaching it. Amen. Amen. This is the only thing that's left. Make no mistake about it. It's all that's left. $350 a year. Slave labor. My, what a remarkable thing. Quickly, I want to cover something with you tonight. In order for the New World Order to bring about what they want, they have to be able to control people. And they have to be able to, ha to surveil, surveillance. Control and surveillance. They have to know where you are, what you're doing, 24 hours a day. Do they have that capability? Yes, they do. As a matter of fact, they're already using it. Will you say they're using all animals? No, they've already passed that stage. The idea of even implanting pets with identifying microchip transponders, a concept that for years approached very slowly. They say, we wanted to make sure it's right for the animals and that the community is willing to accept this new technology, said David Elevato, director of the Novato California Animal Shelter. Now, however, such high-tech tagging is on a fast forward since people have grown accustomed by successful conditioning to what was once considered offensive technology. Every one of us go to the supermarket every week and we watch them scan our groceries constantly. Scan, scan, scan. You're so used to it now, folks, that it's nothing when something new is added. You just take it up there and scan it. Here's what they're planning on doing next. They're just going to pass your hand across the scanner. That's what's next. Your hand goes across the scanner. You've made a deposit to your checking account. You never touched a dollar bill. Your account, when you were paid, it was electronically deposited on your account, and it was electronically sent into your hand. Your hand carries all your money. Everything you own is right here. Through a radio wave, it changes the data right here. You walk up to the grocery store counter, and you pay for everything you've got by simply scanning your hand across that. Is that the mark of the beast? No, that's the control of the beast. You walk up there and he scans your hand like that and it automatically debits your account, goes back to the bank, it's registered in the database, you buy your groceries, you walk out the door, hmm, what could be better than that? Who's going to rob you? You don't have any money in your pocket. You walk up, you buy anything you want, all you've got to do, scan the hand, move the hand, buy an implantable biochip. That implantable biochip has much more than simply information on you. That implantable biochip chip is sending out a radio wave, a transponder. It's being connected somewhere out there. They're reading it. Listen to what's happened just recently. This is one of the most remarkable things I've ever read. According to Destrin director Jim Seeler, implantable RFID biochips are being used even to track fish. In some fishery applications, salmon are injected with these biochips, then scanned and tracked as they pass through specifically equipped dam sites, quote, to assure environmentalists that they are not being chewed up in the dam's power turbines. Unquote, Seiler said. Now listen carefully. This is from Brother Terry Cook. This is his summation, and it's a very accurate one. At the writing of this manuscript, reports were coming out of Europe that poachers were being caught and fined because the biochip implants in the fish led the authorities to the poacher. The implications of this announcement are staggering. It means that the biochip no longer has to be scanned at a close distance of 3 to 12 inches. It would indicate that technology now has been developed and actually put into service that could scan for detection of biochips at great distances, possibly even by satellite. This incident has been reported widely, and I am attempting to verify its validity as this book goes to press. Whether or not this account is factual, it is the ultimate direction biochip technology is heading. As surveillance and control of humans is of far more importance to the leaders of the New World Order than the tracking of animals. You better believe it. 
All of this business about your cat and your dog and your cow, they've got a biochip that they implant in a cow that, that tells that cow, moves that cow to go to a certain point and eat, and when it starts to approach that point, that transponder in that cow sends a message to that barn, and, it's, and it puts a certain amount of food out there for that cow to eat, and that thing literally is taking care of that animal. They're using it on cats and dogs and cows. They're using it in all kinds of applications today, and you can't imagine how close we are to using it on human beings. While there are at least 10,000 application ideas to explore when it comes to Chip's potential, he insists it's only concerned with animal identification and not considering human application. All present manufacturers deny they are considering any form of human applications. However, latest information indicates to the contrary. Now, they know your concern. They know your concern. They know that you're intelligent enough to know that if they can put a biochip in a cat or a dog or a cow and track that thing, they know that if they can put that in you, and you're smart enough to know that if they put that in you, they can track you. And if this is true about fish being tracked and the poachers are being caught because the, ch the fish they stole that they, that they poached had biochips in them, then somehow or another, nobody told us about this, see. They already have the technology to track the poacher. For example, if they just put biochips in all the deer in Cades Cove and, and, and in, the, uh, in the Great Smoky Mountain National Park, they wouldn't have to worry at all about poachers because once he shot that deer and carried that deer out of that park, they would follow him right to his house and they'd have him, they'd have his truck, they'd have his gun, they'd have his house for killing that deer. Right. Tim Willard, managing editor of the World Future Society's bi-monthly magazine, Futurist, said the technology behind such a human microchip is, quote, fairly uncomplicated and with a little refinement could be used in a variety of human applications. Conceivably, a number could be assigned at birth and go with a person throughout life. Most likely, Willard added, it would be implanted in the back of the right or left hand for convenience so that it would be easy to scan at stores. It could be used as a universal identification card that would replace credit cards, passports, that sort of thing. At the supermarket checkout stand, you'd simply pass your hand over the scanner and your bank account would be automatically debited. It would be programmed to replace a medical alert bracelet. For example, at the scene of an accident, a medic could scan the victim's hand to find out his recent medical history, allergies, a relative of contact, etc. This would be especially valuable if the person were unconscious and it would be good. That would be good. Wouldn't it be wonderful if you had your whole medical history, all the medicines you're allergic to, all of that information available just at the scan and this medic would have everything that he needed to know about you? Well, that would all be good. The problem is he knows too much. Well, it's quiet in here tonight. It's scary, isn't it? And I hate to come out and tell people stuff like this except for the simple fact you're warned and you're hearing it now. And you remember a few months ago I did a thing on this. Now you see how it's advanced since then? You see, I'm giving you advancement. I'm showing you how in just a few months it has advanced. They're catching poachers now, folks. They're catching poachers because fish. Now, of course, we have the environmentalists. This is the reason for the fish, the environmentalists and caught in the turbine and so forth and so on. I'm going to close with this today. The PC Bible is here. Not the personal computer, but politically correct. Now, remember about a year ago, we did a thing with Gail Ripplinger. You remember the thesis of her book is that there's a Bible coming, a one-world Bible that unites all the world's religions together. Remember she told you that she'd been warning people about this. She's telling, she's waking, and people are listening. I think in our church, I think the vast majority of you folks will receive what I say. I don't think there's any problem. I believe you receive it. I believe it upsets you. I believe you don't want to hear a lot of it. And I don't want to hear a lot of it. But we need to hear it. We need to hear it. But this is one of the most upsetting things of all. Now listen carefully. The politically correct Bible references to God as our Father 
of Jesus Christ as Lord or Son of God have been deleted, changed, or weakened. Jesus becomes the human one. And in the Lord's Prayer, our Father becomes our Father-Mother. The PC Bible negates scripture references to the Trinity, and God can be interpreted by any religion's God. This Bible will be politically correct for everyone, so the publishers believe. Who are the publishers? Oxford University Press. The translators and revisers of the PC Bible think the King James Version is too racist, favoring Jews. <laughs> can you believe that? <laughs> it calls them the killers of Christ in 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2. It says the wrath of God's come on them to the uttermost in 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2. 1 Thessalonians 2, rather. The translators revised the King James, think, think, think King James two races favoring Jews. So according to reports, names like Jose, Gonzalez, Adolf, or Wu Fong are scattered throughout the text. Also, <laughs> yes, I, the only place I know they got Wu Fong was right here. Just pull it out of the air, put it in there. Also, it is offensive to the handicapped to mention specific illnesses. Therefore, the lame, dumb, and blind become the other abled. <laughs> <laughs> In the PC Bible, discipline becomes a matter of choice, not a commandment. Children should heed their parents, not necessarily obey them. See how they're working this? Why? The UN Convention on the Rights of the Child. It goes hand in hand. The same is true of wives to husbands, or husbands to wives. Well, here we go. <laughs> Committed, not under subjection. You remember the Bible said that the wives be into subjection to their husbands, as unto the Lord? Have you know that it was in the Bible? Raise your hand. <laughs> First time you ever heard it. <laughs> Wish it wasn't in the Bible. Raise your hand. All right. Well, join. There's a crowd here. They'll take it out for you. They just did. Instead of being in subjection, it says they are committed to their husbands, wives. And columnist Don Feeder observes of the new PC Bible, quote, in the inclusive Bible, religion becomes a type of group therapy, the goal being to make everyone feel part of the team. But the kingdom of God isn't governed by equal employment opportunity. Now, do you think that Mrs. Ripplinger is very far off? When she tells the world that there's a new... This is not the end Bible yet. No, 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 no. Oh, by the way, there are now 450 versions of the Bible in English. According to the September 11th, 1995 edition U.S. News and World Report, the latest version is always advertised as the easiest to understand. 450 versions of the English Bible. I saw yesterday a food market in France... And you know the French love food. They're known for their food. They have either 297 or 397 different types of cheese. General Dwight Eisenhower. No, it wasn't. Take that back. It was Churchill. Churchill looked at, uh, what was his name? Uh, the French uh, commander, Gaulle, de Gaulle, Charles de Gaulle. Uh, Churchill looked at Charles de Gaulle at the end of World War II and says, now how is it that the Englishman and the Frenchman can ever come to an understanding of each other when you have 297 different types of cheese? <laughs> now think of it. Well, how in the world could the Church of God know anything I mean, how could we ever have any sense of any bearing, of any truth with four... Now, this is in English, folks. 450 versions of the Bible in English. You want to know which one's right? That's the king of the hill right there. He stands alone. All the rest of those little pups yelping and snapping, they're running around down there. That 449, all of them, every last one of them, NIV, NASV, all the rest of them are little yelping pups trying to climb to the top of the mountain. Amen. And right there is the king of the mountain. Amen. Amen. And they're never going to make it. Never mind. 
Amen. That's the infallible word of God. Amen. The judge of the quick and the dead. That's the book. That's the book that saved my soul. Amen. That's the book, the written, living word of God. The Lord Jesus Christ said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Hallelujah to God. Amen. So how many versions do you need? So why do they have 450? That's it. That's it. Do I need to tell you? <laughs> Can't get one out of here. <laughs> Filthy lucre. That's why. They don't care anything about it. No. And bottom line, that's their, that's their motive. What's Satan's motive? To prepare the world for a one world Bible. Remember, he used the wrath of Pharaoh for his own purposes. Pharaoh had his agenda. Satan had his agenda. That's the way it works. Don't ever under underestimate the devil. Amen. Father, I pray you'd use what I've said tonight. Bless my dear brothers and my sisters. Our Father, I pray this little report that I've given now, they'll take it home, they'll think about it. And our Father, as they read the news, as they see things transpire before them, it'll begin to make sense to them. They'll see, Heavenly Father, how close we are to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we pray tonight, even so come, Lord Jesus, come. By name we pray. Amen.